I'd like to call the committee of the whole meeting for April 27, 2022 to order. I'll call the roll. Council members Dixon? Here. Good? Here. Martinez? Here. Powell? Here. Rauschenberger? Here. Shaw? Here. Stefan? Here. Thorne? Here. Mayor Captain? With the absence of Mayor Captain, I will ask for a motion for Mayor Pro Tem. I make a motion to appoint uh, Councilman John Stefan to Mayor Pro Tem. Second. Okay. Motion and seconded. I'll call the roll. Council members Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Rauschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Stefan? Abstain. Thorne? Yes. Motion passes. All right, I better come down. <laughs> Give me a second, everybody. Okay, one housekeeping item I've been alerted to is that we have to publicly acknowledge that one of the members of the council, Rose Martinez, is wishing to appear remotely. And since we are not under the governor's uh, edict anymore, and that is not allowed unless it's under the rules that we've previously uh, created for ourselves, um, my understanding is that Ms. Martinez wants to appear remotely because of a personal illness. So at this time, I would entertain a motion. To, if anybody wants to make a motion to object, that's the way this works. There's a <clears throat> presumption that she can appear remotely unless somebody wants to make a motion to object. So I would put that out there to the rest of the council. No, okay. All right, I think that was enough time to <laughs> let anybody object, to, but we're not going to. So. With, with the record showing that nobody's objecting to the remote appearance of Rose Martinez. Rose, you are allowed to appear remotely and participate. So with that, hey. yes. Was that you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, with that, we're going to move on to the Committee of the Whole agenda, and I understand that's run by you, Rick, so take it away. Correct. Uh, do we need to approve the minutes first? Yes. Thank you. Okay. okay. That's all right. Yes, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the prior meeting of April 13th, 2022. Second. So moved. So moved. <laughs> so moved, second, yeah. All right, Both with that, uh, I would act, ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Stixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Rauschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Uh, abstain. All right, thank With that, you. I, I, I guess I should announce that approved, that is approved seven to nothing. On to special presentations and reports. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. We have two presentations this evening. The first item, A, is a nightmare on Chicago Street continued discussion. Special Events Co Coordinator Kate O'Leary and city staff will be reiterating their commitment to producing Nightmare on Chicago Street if the city council and community sentiment is to proceed, despite the economic and other factors that may negatively impact this, the event's success this year. The hope this evening is that, to re that we can reach final consensus, and if the decision is to proceed with Nightmare on Chicago Street, it's with the recognition that we sink or swim, win or lose together, without second guessing or finger pointing after the event by those wishing to proceed. Given the current time constraints, starting work on the event, which is a, at the time which is essentially May, when the work typically begins in January, I'm asking that Ms. O'Leary should be afforded the latitude to contract with vendors, beer and otherwise, that in her professional judgment, she deems best qualified to ensure the event's success. Nine years of previous success serve as testament to the financial restraint exercised in producing this event, and it ensures that that same fiscal responsibility will continue for the 10th Nightmare on Chicago Street this October, if that's what's decided this evening. Thank you. I, um, I would like to jump in as Mayor Pro Tem and suggest, based on some comments that I've received, that we have many people signed up to speak about this issue, and 
um, would like to recommend that we allow public comment at this time unless Kate you wanted to make a presentation I no I appreciate it thank you for having okay. me back today um, looking forward to this evening and I'm here for any questions after we hear from the public okay so I think uh, with that, if there's any, unless there's any objections I would just like to move ahead and, and have the comments from people that signed up on this issue so number one Greg Shannon you're number one on the list Thank you, Council. Thank you, everybody, and staff. Thank you for letting us speak. Uh, I know, as all the business people down here, we all we all we all do want nightmare, um, and we want to do everything we possibly can to help Council, help staff, make it all work. Um, we have gone through a pandemic, and there's not a business owner downtown that hasn't changed or pivoted on how they do business. Um, so it was a hard choice where I was trying to get where we can talk and discover what we can do which is why you did not see me enter a a beer vending RFP or whatever 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 you call that um, there's things we have to do that are that are differently and I know when this event invent, uh, event was invented it was invented for the people who own the shops downtown um, so we can make those businesses better and do the things we need to do we're all willing to make efforts and changes and do what we need to do to make make this uh, come 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 around and, and, and work uh, the economic impact for that day is phenomenal but it's not only that day it's that week that month it's people that you meet downstate that say oh Elgin that's that place that does that Halloween thing that's the kind of impact that we need from for this city and, and what we need to keep doing and keep pushing for um, I, I, again I just want to reiterate that all, all us business owners are here to do whatever we can to sit down on a committee and say let's try it this way let's try it that way if the city and staff decide they want to get one beer vendor so be it but we think that it would be I know I can't do it I can't afford it anymore after the pandemic so it's just hard the numbers are too hard for me to the front but all of us can put up one if we wanted to and we still have Elgin beverage who's willing to make all that happen and still make a donation to the uh, nightmare thing too so there's a whole bunch of ways that we can sit down and try to make this work and I just want to bring that up so I want to thank you for your time thank you Thanks, Greg. thank you <laughs> Matt Habib number two I'm flying solo on this one. He's not coming up. Um, so, good evening. Thank you, everyone. Um, thanks for listening to me. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for re examining this a second time because I can't imagine why we would have made the choice the first time to not go ahead and do the nightmare on Chicago Street. Um, I think the city manager basically summed it up perfectly in his words exactly why the city needs this event um, this is not a new story for us it seems that every time that we have something good going for the city in the downtown we like to listen to a small group of naysayers or to focus on the most negative aspect I don't we have a we have a a definite image problem when we continue to entice new people to come to our community to come to I believe what the DuPage courts are going up right the new apartment building we have the tower building we have all of these young people who want to come and enjoy their nightlife enjoy the downtown urban experience live above restaurants live above shops and then we have that little bubble group of naysayers who for some reason hate the downtown and complain about everything that the downtown has to offer to which I say why do they live downtown so I understand that we have financial concerns so we need to pivot just like Greg just said 
every small independent entrepreneur, independent business owner in this city has had to live through the apocalypse for the past two, two and a half years. We've had to jump through hoops, through mandates. We've had to come up with quick on the fly fixes for problems we didn't even know exist. And I have the utmost confidence in this governing body that you guys, with the full force of the city behind you, with, with volunteers and artists and everything that this city has to offer, with all the resources you have chomping at the bit, I'm sure that you guys can find a way that even in a reduced capacity, you can make this event happen and make it happen well because we cannot afford to lose the last great festival that we have. So thank you very much, everyone. I hope you make the right decision. Uh, Jennifer Pollitt? I don't want to. Oh, OK. <laughs> I didn't want to rein him in today, I trust. <laughs> Um, thank you, folks. Um, as the wife of a business owner, I've seen the taxing um, that toll that the last two years have taken. Um, all of these restaurants and owners have had to pivot multiple times. So I'm not going to take up a ton of time to rehash anything, but I do. The only thing I would add is to um, urge everybody to look at this event not just as a microcosm, as a single event, but the role it can play in refocusing the image of Elgin that we want to convey. I'm not a huge zombie fan, although I'm married to one, um, but I see this as an amazing <laughs> opportunity to um, go beyond zombies and continue to craft Elgin's um, position as um, avant-garde artists, musicians, um, entrepreneurs. Um, we have something special, and I feel like we are not cultivating the talent effectively. We're definitely not creating the awareness effectively. Um, and I think this is an amazing opportunity with a well-established event that has a ton of um, traffic and followers already to go beyond just this one event. I don't think any business can sustain off of a single event, but to use this event to continue catapulting Elgin's image beyond this event and to use it as a blueprint to maybe move past zombies and also continue with other themes and events throughout the year. We're all on board for that. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Andrew Cumming. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for being here and re-voting on this. It is such an important thing for downtown, and I'm thrilled that it looks like you know, there's consideration really going forward this year. One of the things that I really want to make sure we do right in going forward, because already it's been addressed how important this is to the city and as owner of three businesses, yeah, this is really important. This event is what sets Elgin apart. We're not St. Charles. We're not Dundee. We're not Geneva, we're Elgin. And this has become our signature event. If we fail on this event, we've lost our way. If we don't put on not just nightmare, but actually put it on right, which means going in and doing the full thing, we're lost. Elgin's gonna have a bad reputation for the next 10 years as far as events go. If we go forward and we do this event and we actually try to make it as good as we can, of course, pivoting and adapting to the current times, but try to make it like it was before the pandemic. People are going to be coming out and again saying how great Elgin is. They're going to remember and they're going to come back in November, December, March. They're going to come back to eat, to shop. Some of them end up moving here as a result of that. I talk to people all the time who first found out about Elgin because of Nightmare. Now the worst thing we could do though, other than canceling the event, is to cut it back to half of what it used to be because then people are going to feel cheated. Then people are going to say, well, why? It wasn't as good, and they're going to think it's going downhill. I would love to urge all of you to think that once we have this event going again, every year it's going to get closer to paying itself off, even make a profit for the city. At the end of the day, when you really look at tax revenues that are brought in as a result of this, revenues from ticket sales, we'll make up the money, for sure. But we just need to do this right 
so that everyone comes in again, so people get used to the great events that Elgin can offer, so that people come in and see what an amazing city this is, instead of just hearing, oh, well, they're not doing it anymore, they must have given up. Are we a city that just gives up? I don't think so. So I would really love to see this event go forward with full force and full support. You've got so many business owners here, and people who aren't present tonight, who want this event to go off, who are going to work with you to make it happen. This is Elgin's signature event. Just think about what else we can do in a few more years, so long as we keep this up. But if we stop now, it's kind of the end of it. So please work with us to make this event, work with all the downtown business owners, with all the city of Elgin as a whole, to make this event go off great. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. All right, Ursula, I've got half of your name here legend. So I'm going to say Ursula Zumartini. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hi. Um, thank you so much for having me today, and thank you for reconsideration of, I call it zombie night. Zombie night. So um, as everyone said already, uh, this is not only one night sales. This is not about one night events. This is not about chunk of money that each business can get. This is about vision of what the downtown Elgin is, what perspective we as the whole can bring to the, to the downtown. It's not about the sales, it's about what is gonna be happening months after that and before. My staff is talking about zombie night starting the end of summer. This is like a huge festival advertising happening even <coughs> before the event itself. This is a constant marketing of downtown Elgin itself before the event and after event, months after that. And I can prove it through the records with my staff. Not to mention how many new employees I did found through this event. During my interviews, say March or June, how did you find out about us? Oh, I was here at the zombie night at Nightmare on Chicago Street. So I do find employees, I did find the bands. I did make through all those years, since 2005, 2006. Now, Zombie Night started 2010, am I right? Okay, long time ago. I was here with Greg Shannon after the very first year, here standing and thanking you guys that you did a great job, and today I'm encouraging you to make it happen again because what you did, what we did as a whole, we did an amazing event, but this is a signature staple that is unique, and nobody does anything like that, and I truly believe we should keep going in order to make things going on. So, I would talk more, but please review my letter that I sent to you two weeks ago before the last me, uh, vote, and I did say a little bit more, so thank you so much, and let's do it, okay? Thank you. Jen Cook. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jennifer Cook of Cook's Ice Cream and Cook's Sweet Boutique. Um, I heard we weren't going to be able to talk, so then I kind of stopped writing. So if I could just for a moment speak extemporaneously. I want to. Um, evoke a, a memory that I've had at Nightmare on Chicago Street. And when I was being recruited in my, rec my current location, um, there's no coincidence that I ended up on Chicago Street because of this one event. Um, Chris Mao and Kathleen uh, Kinney Mao um, from Elgin Blue Box were great mentors of, of mine. And um, it was at the conclusion of one of the first Nightmare on Chicago Street and uh, I was in the Blue Box and all the chairs were up and they had like three sandwich offerings. And he told me, Jennifer, I make all the three months worth of money in this one night and I have you know the protection of all the seasonality I can last through winter from the revenue from just one nightmare on Chicago Street super simple pull up all the chairs and that has that advice that Chris had given me has um, 
it been in my mind ever since the inception of this business. I was going to pull out everything in the boutique. I was going to have four items. I was going to have X amount of the things. And um, I even wanted to have a couple other ideas that I wanted to pitch the Nightmare on Chicago Street area in terms of having maybe a kid's preview time during setup. Because I remember volunteering with my children eight years ago when they were in elementary school, ro uh, rolling fake bloody barrels down the street. And when the characters aren't dressed up and it's daylight and they can see some of these spe you know, Hollywood special effects. And at the Cook Sweet Boutique, having a nursing room or a sensory room upstairs in the loft for people to, you know, to come in and get away from the zombies. Um, I've had a ton of ideas and it was just very heartbreaking for me to hear uh, about the decision that happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, I just, you know, like I said, uh, I have so many memories of all of our best artists and volunteers and nonprofits back in the day when, you know, people came and the ticket sale benefited the nonprofits. I mean, it was such a communal, beautiful thing um, for everybody and, you know, the, the residents and the businesses and the community to like really come together. And yes, it was zombies, but it was really more than that to me. It was really about um, that that sense of you know really pride in the Elgin uh, in downtown Elgin. It was so fun, um, and I would just you know uh, really encourage you uh, to even if it means that we can't have two stages of entertainment to do something um, because I really do think it is that push. I've been waiting for three years for this to happen. I moved in in February of 2020 <laughs> and it got canceled two, three years. And I'm ready and we are ready. And um, please you know, consider um, re-voting on uh, Nightmare on Chicago Street this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody signed up and scratched their name out. I won't say who, but does that person want to talk? No? Okay. Uh, Rich Wagner. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for allowing this opportunity for all of us to be here and reconsidering your vote. As John said, I am Rich Wagner from the D. Rediscover Records in downtown Elgin, and uh, for us and the organizers, this this is like a, a love letter to Elgin, but instead of like flowing words and flowers and poems and candy, it's coffins, blood, uh, what else? Zombies, and we, there's such a passion involved with this. It's the the the. Is, it's palpable the week of, the day of the event, the day after the event, walk downtown the day after the event and just see, it almost looks better, you know, <laughs> after everyone's gone. And we do have substantial business that night, you know, as far as people coming in and buying records and uh, browsing and hardly a day goes by where someone doesn't bring up Nightmare on Chicago Street in my shop, whether they say they were here or they might say, oh, we saw this place during Nightmare. We, want, we wanted to come back. We, we, we had to come back to this place. I mean, barely a day goes by. And uh, even the train, that's like Metro bizarro world because instead of everyone taking the train to Lollapalooza or something, they're taking the, the train here. Yeah. This is the stop. The Elgin stop is the stop. And there's something to be said about that. And uh, even though it's really, the event is about the dead, <laughs> it's like living present day Elgin history. You know, we talk about things that used to be, there's even a book called a series of books called There Used to Be. I don't think any of us are ready for this event to be part of that conversation of there used to be this event or that building or this organization. Uh, you know, maybe it can't go on forever, but plenty of other communities have had events and things go on, you know, for years, what Swedish days is, I think they wore powdered wigs to the first Swedish days, right? I don't know. 
Anyway, I just thank you for reconsidering the vote and thank, thank you guys for all coming too. All right, thanks, Rich. That's all the people I have signed up for public comment on this issue, so I'll. I didn't know how to sign up. Sure, okay, yes. Just tell us your name and. Okay. Okay. That's no ragging. Basically, I had a bunch of things I wanted to say, but everyone has already said them in such beautiful ways that really the takeaway that I have is that this is an event, right? And there's so many business owners. I don't know if I've seen any council meeting look like this recently or in the past, but so much energy and just enthusiasm and testimonies around an event. But what I take away from this is that we're totally capable as Elgin to have an amazing event and have energy around that event that if we don't do it and I don't feel like anyone is like no I don't want to do it because of XYZ I really <coughs> think it was a miscommunication or like where do we go from here and how do we change it so that we can have a successful event this year right I don't think anyone is saying that we're going to do the exact same event from the past we can't and everyone here spent the last two years navigating that where we haven't done that with nightmare but if we can do that for nightmare on chicago we can open ourselves up as the city of elgin for so many events going forward that can be just as successful and now you know that you have so many people to lean on in your downtown area all the business owners their employees their volunteers like i just think this is really beautiful so i hope that it goes through as a yes because you know you have our support and thank you for everyone who said positive things so we all agree on everything that's said so there you go thank you okay i think that's it right all right so i will look to the council for any comments or questions or Katie, did you want to give a presentation? Sorry, I cut you off. To no, do that's the okay. Comment. I uh, I I don't have anything fully prepared because a lot of the things that are uh, that led the vote last council meeting have stayed the same. We do still have those high risks. We still have weather issues. We've got COVID around the corner that we just don't know what's going to happen. But I do think that um, a lot of the the passion is what's driving the vote tonight, which is very exciting. Um, it's a really, really good and accurate representation of Elgin that even in the face of potential, all these risks that we do have, there is still so much love and excitement behind this that, that enough people showed up tonight to want to go forward with it. So uh, I, have, I have no really new information for you, but if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, just please let me know how to proceed. Great. Okay, so I think with that, I'll look both ways. I guess I'll. Well, Tish has got her hand up first, so I'll call on Tish. Thank you. Um, first, I want to thank so many of you who are out in the audience. I've talked to a lot of you um, over the past couple of weeks. Um, first of all, kudos to you for surviving this pandemic. All of you noted the pivoting and the struggles that you had to go through these past few years. It hasn't been easy and my hat goes off to you. I know I personally tried my best to come downtown and, and, and patronize a lot of your businesses during that time. Um, Mel, thanks for all that great sushi. Um, <laughs> but I think what really moves me tonight, well, first of all, I'm wondering who's running your businesses if you guys are all here. Um, just the support that I'm hearing from all of you is so exciting and so invigorating that I hope that we can take this and capitalize on it, not only for this year and not only for this event, but a whole lot of other things moving forward. We talk a lot about hey, we want Elgin to be a destination for culture and arts and entertainment, and we want the, the downtown to be a destination. And then we had the, what I'll call a oops vote two weeks ago that really kind of counters that. We gotta be, we gotta be willing to take some risk. We gotta be willing to think outside of the box and do some things differently. And 
post pandemic, we're going to have to do things differently. That's not just the businesses who've already proven they've had to do stuff differently. We as a council have to do things differently. Staff has to do things differently. And our community has to do things differently. But I think this is a great step and we've seen that folks are willing to do that. I echo everything I've heard in terms of we may not do the event exactly the way we've done it before. But as I said two weeks ago, I trust that committee. I trust y'all. Y'all are the craziest, most creative group of folks I can think of. The stuff that you come up with is amazing to me. And I, I know that we can put on an event that will make us proud and will keep people coming back here. That is the point. And I think, and I really feel this, that if we're going to pivot and have to make some changes, this is the year that people are going to be most forgiving of changes. Folks are dying to go somewhere, no pun intended. But <laughs> folks are ready to go out somewhere for an event. And I really think that this is the event for Elgin. Besides, I mean, people are excited about the 4th of July parade going back. I mean, coming back. Obviously, that's great. That's great for families. But people are excited about this, too. Um, my vote hasn't changed. Um, I supported it last time. I, I support it now. Um, but I will say this. I really urge our committee and our staff to make sure that we circle back with all these people and get all of these ideas and this energy to make sure that we incorporate that and in what we do this year and what we do moving forward. That's my only ask. For all of the folks on social media that have said, boo, Elgin's getting rid of Nightmare, if we manage to bring it back, I want every last one of those single folks signing up <laughs> to volunteer yeah. some time. So we all need to have some skin in the game. Um, I'm just very much pro Nightmare. I'm pro Elgin. And I'm, I'm just really excited about the, the prospect of bringing this back. So thank you all for taking the time to, to come down here tonight and, and, and share your thoughts and your ideas and your feelings about this event. But most importantly, to share your passion for our city. That's what I got. And that excites me. Thank you. Steve? Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem John. Um, well, I know that there's a few folks out there that, uh, that were surprised at my decision two weeks ago because here I love the event and I've been fortunate enough to be up on that main stage making all the announcements every year. And it's one of my favorite things to do. Anyone that knows me personally knows I love a microphone. But I was concerned with all of the points of uh, interest that were brought forth in the presentation by Kate and the staff two weeks ago. Since then, I have never had an experience like this in my life before, getting so many emails, so many calls, so many text messages, so many face-to-face -face encounters, and not one of them thanked me for my vote. In fact, I look out at this audience here tonight, and I don't think there's one person out here that doesn't want this thing. Everyone that's here tonight wants it. You know, Matt said something about we survived the pandemic, and all of you survived it. But you know, there's some people that aren't here because they didn't survive it. And we want Elgin to survive. I've heard so many interesting concepts from different people throughout the last couple weeks. My dear friend Greg and I had a sit down this past Monday. I wanted his take and his input. He's been so involved in it 
And thank God that Greg's heart and soul is in his business and his employees and his people and his livelihood because he's still here. Elgin Public House is still here. And we're all lucky. But um, there's one thing that I think, I hope Kate and the committee could think about that as you all talk about the fact that this is of such a benefit to the downtown businesses, and I believe in the DNA, and Jennifer does a great job, but what if your downtown business is slightly outside of the fence line of the border of the nightmare program? One that comes to mind is one that's trying so hard, the red poppy. Why can't they benefit? I would hope that maybe you could come up with some type of an opportunity for them to have a booth somewhere. I think that would be fair. Maybe Danny's could have pizza at a booth somewhere. Because in a way, they're slighted by the way that we're talking about all these other things. I care about everybody, and I care about the whole city, but right now I care mostly about everyone that's here because you all care so much that you're here. You're here making your statement. And some of you spoke, some of you chose not to, but you're here in support of it. I listened. Uh, a few months ago, we had a situation up here where I was opposed to something, but by the time everyone was done talking, I was the last one to speak, and I said, I'm not a stubborn man. I listen. And I now have a different take on it, and I changed my vote, and I supported something that I wasn't going to support in the beginning. That's my situation tonight, and I knew already before I came here tonight that I was now going to be for it, which was why I wore this tie with monsters on it, <laughs> and uh, I will be supporting it. I have faith in you, Kate, and the team, and I do hope what Tish said is the case that all these social media people will be happy to get us some volunteers. That's one thing we're missing but maybe they'll keep coming out of the woodwork. Let's hope this pandemic keeps going away and it's further away in the history. And let's hope that our dear friend Gloria in the back writing this story as we all talk for the Courier News gives us a great report. <laughs> thank you, Gloria, for all you do. And thank all of you for coming tonight. Dustin. Yes. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, <clears throat> so obviously, thank you to everybody. I know you have other things that you could be doing right now. Um, I would have liked to see all of you under different circumstances, but nonetheless, this is uh, local government at work. So um, I just want to say thank you for um, bringing up positivity in this entire uh, comment section. Um, there's a lot of ways you could have gone the flamethrower route, um, and I know <laughs> that the decisions that were made up here, um, everybody wants the best for Elgin. Um, I know that there are significant financial concerns that we discussed. Um, I think you all are aware of them. And, you, you know, I think, you know, you probably haven't watched the last couple of meetings because you have other things going on. Um, but, you know, I, I've wavered in some ways. You know, I kind of started where this is kind of scary. There's a lot of variables that we um, don't know about, um, whether it be weather or the pandemic. Um, you know, for those of you who know me, you know, I got really sick. Um, I haven't been out as much as I normally was. And so I take it seriously, but also I understand life has to go on. So um, I'm just, I, I want to point out, this isn't necessarily, a, my vote last week wasn't a vote against staff. Um, it's more so taking a gamble on everybody here. Because um, I know artists perform well when they're put in a box. Um, I know what it's like when you show up to a shift and you get that surprise, hey, we got 100 people, and you make it happen. Um, so. I've worked with some of you. I have confidence that you know what this event is like, what it can be. Um, I'm excited to see what it grows into. Um, but I really just wanted to say thank you for bringing a positive vibe to the podium um, because nobody up here wanted to knock this down for any reason other than trying to be uh, fiscally responsive or responsible. Um, I also appreciated the comments that were made uh, here and as well as in emails about building out around this event. That's something that I, you, know, you always hear about. Man, there's a lot of work that goes into Nightmare for a short event. 
Um, so I think everybody's looking to try and stretch this energy out. Um, so I'm happy to hear that everybody's already in that vein of thinking. Um, and I also want to say that we do know that there are risks and you know, we're making this vote. And if things were to go bad, if weather were to you know, turn for the worst, something unforeseen happens, this is on us. This isn't, st staff's gonna do everything that they can. They came out and said they're 110% ready to go if we decide to do that. So that's what we're supposed to be here for, is to hear everything from, from you all, and then come up here and make a decision that's balanced and also extend coverage to staff so um, they're not taking heat from people on social media that like to throw rocks. Um, but I just think that uh, overall, we're, we're making the decision to go big. Uh, we're not going home, or at least, well, we'll see what happens when the vote comes down. Um, but that was my position last vote. That's my position this vote, um, is that we, we have to step up and move forward. Um, you know, the downtown needs it, businesses need it, people need it. So um, again, thank you for taking your time out and showing up for this really important vote. Um, so thank you. Anybody else? Carol? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say a few words. First of all, thanks everyone for being here. Right after the last vote, first of all, I ran into three of the um, uh, nightmare committee members by chance and um, had a long conversation with them and, um, and, and talked to some of the business people as well. And all I can say is the enthusiasm that I heard from those people and from here, from you here tonight I don't see how you wouldn't, you know, take all that energy and make it go forward and it'll be great. I mean, that's the kind of trust that you have just explained to me tonight. So, um, I, you know, I wanted it to go forward initially. Um, maybe this was a, just a moment for us to um, say, okay, what can, do, what, what can we do a little better this year? And it, it is different because of the pandemic. But I do appreciate... Um, you know, again, the, that enthusiasm makes me just feel uh, very th like the, there's trust there that this will be a great event, no matter what happens. So thanks. Corey. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Um, it's great to see all the downtown businesses and the people that I know that frequent downtown uh, here this evening to come out and speak out on behalf of something that we all want to see. Um, Nightmare on Chicago Street has been a staple of the city for uh, a decade now. And uh, just to reiterate uh, a couple of comments from my colleagues here, um, there's no one here that doesn't want Nightmare on Chicago Street. Um, the conversation that we had over the last couple of city council meetings uh, concerning Nightmare on Chicago Street um, were uh, initially very preliminary conversations. Uh, and a lot of the information um, or details of the information as far as the financials of it um, had not all come in. Uh, they still haven't come in and it's ever changing. Um, and since that last vote two weeks ago, I've had the benefit of speaking with uh, Kato, Kate and to um, discuss the event and the financials of it. Um, and she has assured that um, not only is she gonna be super mindful of what's being spent, but that she's gonna go above and beyond to make sure that the best Nightmare on Chicago Street event is gonna be put on possible. Um, and. Um, and so tonight I am going to support this. Uh, and and all, of the, all of the downtown businesses that are here tonight and some that may not be able to be here because they don't have the bandwidth right now. One of the things is the downtown businesses, all of them don't always stay open on this night. I would like to see more businesses open on Nightmare. So we have this you know, this, this support, I wanna see all of the businesses, if you can handle it, if you can do it, go, you know, whatever you need, be open for this night. Let's really show up and show out and make sure that we give people who are visiting downtown and the residents that are already here, that opportunity to really see what your business is and so that you can get and gain that exposure. So uh, do you, are you sure that you 
want this? Yeah. Okay. If you if you really want this, tell me you want this. Do you want this? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's more like it. So I'm going to vote in favor of it. And I expect to see all of you. And as I told Kate, I'm going to, I'm going to show up and I'm going to volunteer some of my time too as well. So I don't remember, every, I don't remember names very well, but I remember faces. <laughs> I, yeah, there you go. Okay. There you go. There you go. So, yeah. right, right. So I, you know, and I, I know where your businesses are, so I expect to see you. Okay. So uh, I, I look forward to it. And I guess maybe the, the last thing is, for me, just a question to you, and I, and I hear what the city manager is saying, uh, but, Kate, do you, are you shifting on your recommendation at all? Is there anything that you would like to add since last week or, you know, per conversations, anything like that? Well, it's very, I mean, I'm just in a really tough spot because Nightmare has been a huge part of my life since it started, uh, being a patron for the first few years, then shadowing Barb as she was putting it on, and then kind of just growing with being around the committee and then finally taking it on myself in 2019. Uh, so I, I know what a good time it is. I actually, that's where my husband and I like really solidified our relationship. So it's got a, a very special place in my heart. Um, and uh, and I'm, I've got so many friends on the committee. It's just, it's a, it's a passion of mine and I'm very excited about it. It, it, it makes me so happy. Um, but in the position that I'm in, sometimes it's just, it's hard to walk that line being responsible to the city of Elgin and to all of the residents, as well as the ones that are um, showing up for different events, whether it's Nightmare on Chicago Street or the Fish for Fun event, just trying to please all of the people in all of the kind of specific events that we do and being mindful of the cost that it is gonna be to the whole city. Um, so in terms of where I stood last, the last council meeting, the factors that drove the, the uh, recommendation to be no have stayed the same. Um, they, they're still the same now, but as an individual that loves Nightmare very much, I'm excited to, for the direction that it's going tonight. All right. So we, you know, more volunteers, right? We were struggling uh, yeah, for, to a, find volunteers before. You see everybody here behind it? I'm, I'm excited. We're going to do some okay. round tables. All right. Well, um, you confident that you can get this done? Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah, I can do it. I mean, we can do it, but I was trained by... Barb, so I, I no. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Elgin, let's get it. Hello. Hello. Yes, Rose. I was going to call on you. I think I think that's you. Thank you, Pro yes. Temp Mayor Stephan. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I have already said in the past how much I love Nightmare on Chicago Street as a city event, that doesn't change. Uh, it's one of the best events Elgin has. I caution you, it's not a competition of who wins or who loses. We need to do what's best for all of Elgin. This is a decision where not everyone's gonna be happy with the outcome of what I hope is the final decision. My concern with this event is the lack of time to put it together and it and its strain it will have on our staff and the generous volunteers for a day event. All of the just all of the logistics it takes um, it it takes a lot to put it together that we can't even imagine um, the stuff that we don't see that needs to be done trying to put it together in the time available is not gonna reflect well on an, Elgin. An in the past, having more time allowed, it allowed us to recoup some time and, and it allows us to recoup some money we put in. This, this event is not an event that the city makes money on, you know. Um, now, starting in May, the risk of weather, the risk of lockdowns, and the risk of daily costs keep increasing, and it isn't a wise investment. Coming out of COVID has been very challenging. We proceeded cautiously to keep our community safe. 
We are continuing to move forward with health being our priority. I, I still support the staff's recommendation in waiting until 2023 when we can hopefully host this event as it deserves to be hosted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one, one Robert's Rules of Order I remember uh, having to do this on the fly is that everybody gets a chance to speak before we get repeat. So Toby, you're the last one. No, you, okay. I believe Steve had his hand up first. So Thank you. I just wanted to make, I kept hearing the word volunteer. <laughs> And uh, as I had mentioned, uh, and I'd been the MC on the stage all the time, I do want it to be clear that I've never received any money for being the MC. So, and that would certainly be the case moving forward should I be fortunate enough to be able to hold that position again. But I just wanted to make that statement that uh, I was never paid for that. Um, the other thing that wasn't brought up, and I think that it's something important, especially since Gloria is still taking notes back there, is that everyone talks about the cost, but no one has brought up the figure of what we hope to bring back in. And they also talked about everyone is used to spending more money, and the fact that, uh, Greg even mentioned it, people are, the young people are who comes to this event primarily. And if it's $30 a ticket, I don't think that's gonna turn people away because people are spending more on everything. Look at how much martinis cost nowadays. <laughs> so Greg easily mentioned to me and just put out a number, if 15,000 people come at $30 a ticket, there's 450,000 right there. If the numbers played out like that and we spent 512, then we still have money that we're gonna recoup from the beer licenses. The next thing you know, it's not costing us 500,000. It's costing us 50, maybe 40, let alone all the tax revenue we're gonna get. And the fact that I remember when I was at Bennigan's once, they said the, the Holiday Inn's packed, every hotel is filled. Then the restaurants are filled. And I love what Rich Wagner said, the train stops here. People come back. They didn't buy a record when they were here at Nightmare, but they said, yeah, I came back because I, I was here at Nightmare and I saw your store the residuals and the income that this town makes and all of you make after the fact is not measurable from the event, but we all know it happens. So thank you for letting me speak again. And again, I'm behind you all. Thank you. Carol, you had your hand up, you wanna go? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say something very similar. Um, I think when we talk, or we're always talking about costs, I don't think we put on any event that makes money um, and you know, our events are for our community. So I, I don't feel like that should always be our bottom line. Um, and as, as um, we've just mentioned that there are um, benefits that you know, are not measurable, that go on and on and on. And l let's be you know, thoughtful about those things as well. Thanks. Well, I've held my tongue. Um, oh, oh, John. Oh, yeah, Rose, you want to go again? Sure. Just, just one last thing. I want to know if anybody can tell me how accurate that is about hotels being full, because I've never heard of that. I, <clears throat> can anybody say that <laughs> or verify that? <laughs> I can. Council Member Martinez, you're in, you're in character this evening for the event. Sounds like with your voice. I'm sorry that you're under the weather. I had a conversation earlier this week with the executive director of the Elgin Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And um, while Nightmare on Chicago Street does generate some hotel stays, um, if Ms. Murphy was here this evening, I think that she would, and in fact, I'm, I'm confident that she would state that what fills up the hotels in Elgin more than anything else are the athletic events and tournaments. And so while there's certainly a benefit from out of town visitors, and we do see hotel stays as a result of that at Nightmare on Chicago Street, um, by far the overwhelming um, source of hotel stays in Elgin is generated from those athletic events and other tournaments. Is that good, Rose? I was just gonna ask, so is there any numbers that say um, 
what the difference is on this one night as opposed to uh, what, what an event that we're talking about, a sports event. I don't have a comparison between um, hard numbers for both of those events in front of me, Councilwoman Martinez, but I think that's, that's something that I can talk to Ms. Murphy and I can provide that information to the council so we have that, that benefit. I'm sorry, I just don't have it in front of me at this time. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh, Corey, one last time. Yep. Thank you. Um, this actually raises a um, another opportunity. Um, at the last council meeting, we talked about data and a little bit and about ways that uh, we could capture data to help better tell the story. Um, and I think that it's fitting. I, I know that it's going to be a time crunch to get there, right? So to set up the mechanisms to get things in place to do an accurate data count, not on patronage, not that, but on um, taxes uh, that we're receiving from hotels or gas fuel or however we can monitor, we really have to figure out how to capture that data so that we can tell a more accurate story so that we could beat down those concerns of costs and be able to show what is actually generated from this event, right? So I had a conversation uh, with the with the wonderful Jennifer Fukala Downtown Neighborhood Association this week on ways and ideas in which we can capture that data. Um, we mentioned the uh, Travelers and Conventioners Bureau. Um, working with these other organizations that we do already have to figure out how to better capture that, that data. I think that that is essential going forward. We know how to do the event. Um, we know how to get people here and make sure that it's successful, but on that back end, being able to tell that story, being able how to understand those numbers and how to even market the event in a different kind of way that's going to capture people who may not have come here before, that data is king, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to install that into this conversation so that when we are talking about this come next year, we can speak to some of the, possibly speak to some of that data a little bit better. Sure. And then the year after that, we can speak to it even better, yeah. right? So let's put those mechanisms in place so that we can accurately tell our story instead of other people telling it for us. So thank you. Thanks. 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 Yeah. Yep. I think Ms. O'Leary, you can let council member Dixon know that in some ways you're a step ahead of him on this with the plans for the marketing what? study. No. You want to share that what? information? What? I, I know. Yes, ahead, we, no, we do have that in place. A lot of, a lot of, um, as we're coming out of this pandemic, a lot of the focus is shifting into um, mechanisms that we can put in place to set us up for success for the future years. So a lot of the last couple of years have just been trying to stay afloat um, and just kind of pivot and navigate um, the waters the best we can. And now that we're kind of seeing the other side of that, there are we're, we'll have conversations with Jennifer and I. Um, with Chris Lee and I, and, and uh, Amanda is working on the market study with myself and with the Hemmins crew, um, just to try and get some building blocks in place so that we have more measurable data in a lot of capacities, not just for nightmare, not just for events, but for a lot of the, uh, the metrics that we're looking to measure to make the, uh, better informed decisions moving forward. All right. Good. I think that's okay. <laughs> just okay. <laughs> One last time, I'm looking up and down the dais. Everybody's... Do we need a motion or not? Yeah, we do actually. We haven't actually asked for a motion. There's no motion pending, yeah, so is there a motion? I'll make one. Um, I'll make a motion that we move forward with Nightmare on Chicago Street um, with a, uh, a, t a budget of $500,000. I second. Okay, now that there's a motion. Just a, just a yeah. clarification, I think you need to make a re motion to reconsider it, I would assume, by someone who was in the majority of last time. Yeah. Make a motion to reconsider? No? no. no? So, um, oh, we need that's a motion someone. to reconsider made by someone who voted on the prevailing side. So someone, someone who, who voted, voted against no it. the last time needs to make the motion to reconsider. Got it. I'll make the motion 
I make a motion that we move forward with the nightmare on Chicago Street as presented by Miss O'Leary to take place in 2022. So you intend that as a motion to reconsider the vote from the last meeting? Correct. And then anyone can second that? Second. Okay. So the motion to reconsider is on the floor and, and that should be called and then the, uh, if that passes, then the main motion can be considered to proceed. Okay, so before us is a motion to reconsider the right. vote from two so weeks ago. So if you're in favor of reconsidering the vote, you would vote yes here. Okay, everybody got that? Okay, Kim, can you call the vote, please, Ms. Dewis? Councilmembers Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? No. Powell? Yes. Rauschenberger? Yes. Shaw? No. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Yes. I believe the vote is to pass the reconsideration on a vote of five to two. So now the uh, Ms. Powell's main motion would be on the floor. Was there a second for that? Yeah, I second. Okay. Second. And that's to proceed with the event for this year with a $500,000 budget. Is there any discussion on that motion? Can I, I, I have a question. Hold on. Yeah. Rose, go ahead with yours. What was budgeted um, in December for Nightmare on Chicago Street or for this event? Does anybody does anybody know that? Do you? I, I'm sorry. Or I set aside. I don't have the number off the top of my head of what the special events budget was for it. It we don't uh, generally uh, uh, get each event approved. Um, I believe the total special events budget was uh, maybe around half a million dollars and that includes all of the event programming that we have uh, from from January to December of 2022 okay thank you do you, do you want to clarify that Rick? You want to say oh um, Ms. O'Leary I was looking at the chart that was provided nightmare in Chicago Street the estimated expenses mm -hmm. for the event this year three hundred sixty two thousand dollars plus the hundred and fifty thousand dollars in estimated city labor which provides an est a total estimate in it in excess of the five hundred thousand dollar limit and I was going to ask Mayor Pro Tem if Ms. O'Leary might be allowed to opine on her with using her professional judgment on the proposal to have a half million dollar limit for this event certainly yeah yeah i'm sorry capping capping the event is very difficult it's, it's difficult with any event i understand that this budget is a little higher than you know a smaller concerts in the park event that goes a little bit over budget um but we run into problems all the time at the 11th hour where um a vendor has fallen through or had had something happen and we'd have to go with the next available option which just by nature of needing it at that minute with that specific item is is costly um we've had to I, I know for a fact that we've had to run to home depot and buy every single extension cord that they have just because ours are missing or fried or they were loaned or they've just they've walked somewhere um we have measures again in place to, to prevent that sort of thing from happening but those are those are last minute things that we just cannot account for um, that would make putting a cap on the event very difficult, um, especially if, if this moves forward and we start, you know, making um, decisions as early as tomorrow. The money is, is spent starting now through the event, and so if we get to October 1st and, and we hit that cap, there's there's no way to predict what else we would need right before the event that would, would prohibit us from getting that. So I, I would not recommend a cap on the event. I, like I, I mentioned, I will do everything in my power to keep it under. Um, the budget is an estimate of kind of what the trends we are seeing right now as things are increasing in cost. Um, but there's nothing to say that as we start to finalize those numbers that we find some prizes and support from the community that we can lean on and get better resources for a lower cost that would put us under budget. That's, that's my hope. Um, that's what I strive for. I know that's what everybody's striving for. Um, <clears throat> but I just want to make sure that it's, it's a possibility that we will approach that, that $512,000. Okay, so on top of that, does that mean it would be an extra 100000 for uh, police and fire? Or, or what does that mean, city manager? Thank you, council member. The $150,000 estimate for city labor is, is something that is rolled into the personnel budgets of both public safety, 
public works and land management, all of which provide labor for that event, and that typically, um, and that, that includes some overtime with that. And that is not unusual. The labor costs from, from the city staff that are estimated $150,000, that is consistent. The number that has increased is that $362,000 um, estimate in expenses based on the reasons that Ms. O'Leary's provided to us earlier. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So we have a motion and a second. Any further comment on the pending motion, including yes. in light of the comments? Yes, John. Okay, Tish. Um, I, I will amend my motion to um, remove the dollar amount. Um, so I'll just remove my, uh, I'll amend my motion to remove the dollar amount, but then I've got some comments after that. Okay. And Carol, you'll second that amended motion? Is that the way it goes, Bill? Good, okay. All right, so we have an amended motion on the floor uh, to approve Nightmare on Chicago Street without any f uh, budgetary limit. So with that, any further comments? Dustin. Yeah, the, the one variable I, I don't think has been brought up today is that we do have opportunities for sponsorship. Obviously, if we do pursue that, we want those sponsorships to fit within the framework of the event. Um, I've already reached out to some people and kind of had this preliminary, hey, if things shake out this way, would you be interested? And have gotten some of that interest. So um, just I understand the, the concern here. We don't want this to just skyrocket. Um, but there are other levers beyond, you know, we talked about the velocity of money going through the downtown and tax revenue we get from that aside from ticket prices. So uh, I just wanted to throw that into the conversation. There is another wheel that we can kind of grease up to try and make this uh, as smooth as possible. Thank you, Steve. And I'll announce those sponsors from the stage. <laughs> for free. For free. For free, yes, for free. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Tish, you wanted to make some comments. Yes. Um, so I, I, I echo what um, Councilman Good stated in terms of us trying to uh, pursue sponsorships. The way we've grown this this event over the past decade, I think it should be pretty easy for us to get some sponsorships that could help offset some of these costs. I also had the opportunity to speak with um, with Chrissy Palermo earlier this week, Mel, Mel's mom, um, and she had a really interesting um, and unique idea about how we might be able to leverage uh, the non for profits. I know we done some things in the past where they sold tickets and they were supposed to uh, provide some um, in-kind labor uh, and, and keep that money. But then it sounds like from talking to you that folks didn't always show up and do what they were supposed to do. Well, of course, they already had their money and there was no incentive for them necessarily to show up except for, you know, just doing the right thing. But her, her idea was a little bit of a different spin on that, where they don't get paid until after they put their skin in the game. So I think it's something really worth looking at um, that could, again, spread this benefit out to the entire community and help potentially reduce our costs and address some of the needs that I know you stated that um, we, we have for volunteers for that event. So, so thanks, Chrissy. Anybody else? From the dais or rose? No. Well, I haven't said anything. I'll, I'll just try to keep my comments really quick last. Uh, I, I'm kind of surprised <laughs> at the vote two weeks ago because um, I've been uh, very supportive of this event. And um, even though I knew I wasn't going to be here at that meeting, I still met with a lot of the key people that create this event, that put their talents into this event. And all of them are very desirous to do this and are willing to make it happen and do what has to be done to make sure it's done and done right. Um, so I'm all for it. Uh, I'm going to vote in favor. Um, and, but I also understand, as the comments were made from all of you out there, that things have changed. And so we've got to look at different ways to do this, different models, different uh, setups. And so that's mm -hmm. all in the, in the mix. So I'm glad uh, that those comments were made. And, I'll just echo uh, what has been said that all those people, certainly you guys here are, I'm preaching to the choir when I talk to you, but all the people that send emails in support, we're, we're going to look for them to be out there helping and volunteering and making this thing happen. So I'll end it there and call the vote. So Ms. Dewis. Councilmember Stixon? Yes. Good? Yes. 
Martinez? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Powell? Yes. Rashmer? Yes. Shaw? No. <clears throat> Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Yes. I believe that passes with a vote of five to two. So, so we've we've managed to get through one item in this uh, <laughs> cow agenda, and it's now 7:10. So, Sherry and Miss Hayner and Miss Camacho, I sorry to do this to you, but we're going to have to adjourn and take the seven o'clock meeting because we have four proclamations, and those people are here as well. But luckily, it's a very short agenda, so it shouldn't be that long of a wait. So. I am going to ask that we have a motion to adjourn uh, and uh, reconvene at the regular uh, council meeting at 7.15. Move to adjourn. Second. No, 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 not 7.15. 7.15? That's not enough time? Four minutes. All right, let's, all right, all right. Let's make it 7.20. Everybody's good with 7.20? Okay, we're going to adjourn until okay. 7.20? Yes, okay, okay. that's Count the, yeah. Councilman. Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Rauschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Yes. I believe that passes 7 nothing. We will reconvene at 7.20 at the regular council meeting.
mic's not on. Sorry, sorry, it Claire. is, but she isn't. Oh, there we go. Oh, here we go. All right. Now it's official. I have a gavel. Yeah, I got to not have it. Yeah. Seven twenty-two, and we are all back. Rose, are you on? Yes, I am. Okay, Thank good. You. Thank you. All right, I will give you an official gavel and call the regular council meeting to order. It's about seven twenty-two. Uh, can we? When, when should we do? The, we we need to do the mayor pro tem for yes. this meeting. Yes. So okay. We need to have the clerk call the roll first, and then Got make it. the motion for the mayor pro tem. Got it. Okay. Roll call. We'll do the pledge first. Oh, Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> Everybody join me. Steve, you want to start us? Sure. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, now Com roll call. Sorry, Ms. Dewis. That's okay. Councilmember Dixon? Here. Good. Here. Martinez? Here. Powell? Here. Rauschenberger? Here. Shaw? Here. Stefan? Here. Thorne? Here. Mayor Captain? With the absence of Mayor Captain, we'll take a motion for Mayor Pro Tem. I make a motion to elect uh, Councilman Stefan as Mayor Pro Tem. Second. 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 Motion and second. I'll take the roll call. Great. Council members Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Rauschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Stephan? Abstain. Thorne? Yes. The motion passes. So with a vote of 7-0, I will take the role of Mayor Pro Tem and ask for a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting of uh, Council. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Yep, Bill's going to yell at me. Sorry. We have to do, uh, we have to ha have the opportunity because uh, Councilwoman Martinez is appearing remotely. According to our rules, which we are now under because the governor's rules about pandemic are expired, uh, right at this point, we have to have an opportunity for a motion if somebody objects to Miss Martinez appearing remotely. She is appearing remotely under our ordinance due to a illness, and, but there can be a motion if anybody objects. So I'm opening that to the dais. Quickly seeing that nobody wants to make that motion. So then Rose, you are allowed to uh, appear and participate remotely. So. Thank you. Yes. Okay, with that, we've cleared that. Now let's ha uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting of April 13th, 2022. So moved. Second. Motion second, we can call the roll. Council members Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Rauschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Uh, abstain. The minutes are approved seven to nothing with one abstention. And with that, we'll go to communications. And that means I should head down mm -hmm. to the dais. Okay, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Is this on? Good, okay, great. Turn it this way. So I have four proclamations to 
present tonight, and the first one is for Arbor Day for 2022, and I am to have Greg Holke from our land management and public works Parks approach, and Parks and Rec, and read the proclamation. So, in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Ag Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees called Arbor Day which was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and which is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can be a solution to combating climate change by reducing the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cutting heating and cooling costs, moderating the temperature, cleaning the air, producing life-giving oxygen, and providing habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community and are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now therefore, I, David Captain, Mayor of the City of Elgin, do hereby proclaim April 29, 2022 as Arbor Day in the City of Elgin, and I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and efforts to protect our trees and woodlands and to protect trees and to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. In witness hereof, I have hereunto set my hand this 27th day of April, 2022, signed by our Mayor, David Captain. So, Greg, I will present this to you, and if you want to make a few comments, okay. you're welcome sure. to. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, um, I want to say thank you on behalf of our forestry department, um, on behalf of myself being an arborist as well, and the other arborists in our uh, forestry department. I know all of us are always very proud and also excited to take care of our urban forest and hope that it lasts for a very, very, very long time. Um, one thing of note, uh, this year we are doubling the amount of trees we are planting. Uh, in the past we have planted 250 trees a year, this year we are planting 500. Uh, thanks to the help a little bit of the sustainability, Com the sustainability commission getting their boots on the ground and doing some uh, some walking around and you know educating the public as to the importance of trees. So I want to thank them for that. And, uh, and like I said, me and the forest department, myself and the rest of the city, we're, we're happy to serve and we're happy to 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 be very proud of our urban urban canopies. Thank you very much. Congratulations, yes. We have the flyers for the tree planting at our house, and we've been giving them out, yes. Excellent. Next, I have a, a proclamation to recognize International Compost Awareness Week. And Michaela and Tom, are you guys here? Yeah, you guys are here. Uh, we're going to present this to you on behalf of the Sustainability Commission. I hope I got the right one, right? Yes. So, proclamation, whereas... The Compost Research and Education Foundation, along with Canada, Australia, and the United Kingdom, and other countries have declared the first full week of May to be the annual International Compost Awareness Week, and whereas composting is a way of nourishing soil while reducing erosion, conserving water, reducing non-point source pollution, decreasing chemical fertilizer use, and whereas organic materials make up approximately 30% of the material going to landfills, and composting is one of the primary methods communities can use to reach waste diversion goals. And whereas community sustainability is enhanced by composting and curbside collection programs, home composting and leaf mulching are ways households can reduce the volume of waste generating at home. And whereas International Compost Awareness Week is a publicity and education initiative to promote compost production and use by showcasing the importance of compost for healthy soil and clean water now and for the future. Now, therefore, I, David Captain, Mayor of the City of Elgin, Illinois, do hereby proclaim the week of May 1st to May 7th, 2022, as International Compost Awareness Week, signed by the Mayor. So with that, I'm going to have Michaela Larson and Tom Armstrong come forward and accept the award. Michaela is our staff person in charge of Sustainability Commission, and I'm missing the title. Sustainability Analyst, yes, and Tom Armstrong is the chair of that commission. So I'm going to present this to you and ask Thanks. if you guys have any comments Thank or, you so or much. yes, Tom, <laughs> who wants to speak? Well, 
thank you all for recognizing the first week of May as International Compost Awareness Week as we're all trying to reduce our household waste, uh, recycling organics and uh, recycling yard waste is a great way to reduce that amount. Um, and the City of Elgin, through our uh, waste management contract, uh, residents have access to a curbside organics collection program. So if you're interested in learning more or signing up, feel free to call waste management directly to sign up for that. Um, those organics that are collected become a valuable resource called compost that can be used uh, in lawns, gardens, and other applications to, as the proclamation said, uh, stabilize soil, uh, reduce water usage, and add nutrients. So it's a really great, uh, great week. So thank you all. Thank you. Uh, okay, Tom's gonna take a pass. Next, we have a proclamation for National Crime Victims' Rights Week. I believe we have people here from the Victim Services team at the Police Department. Joanne? Joanne Stingley is going to come up. All right, we're going to have you guys introduce yourselves. Joanne, I know. <laughs> yeah. Wanna... Joanne Stingley. Natalie Perez. Vanessa Bond. Lark Cerise. All right, welcome. All right, let me read the proclamation. Whereas crime victim rights passed, crimes victims' rights acts passed here in Illinois and at the federal level guarantee victims the right of right to meaningful participate in the criminal justice process, and whereas this commemorative week celebrates the energy, perseverance, and commitment that launched the victims' rights movement, inspired its progress, and continues to advance the cause of justice for crime victims. And whereas, crime can leave a lasting impact on any person, regardless of age, national origin, race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, immigration, or economic status. And whereas, victim service providers, advocates, law enforcement officers, attorneys, and other allied professionals can increase access to victim services in areas that have been historically underserved, marginalized, and adversely affected by inequalities by implementing culturally responsive services. And whereas National Crime Victims' Rights Week provides an opportunity to recommit to ensuring that all victims of crime, especially those who are, challenge, are challenging to reach or serve are afforded their rights and receive a trauma-informed response. Now, therefore, I, David Captain, Mayor of the City of Elgin, Illinois, do hereby proclaim the week of April 24th to April 30th, 2022 as Crime Victims' Rights Week and express our sincere gratitude and appreciation for those community members, victim service providers, and criminal justice professionals who are committed to improving our response to all victims of crime so that they may find relevant assistance, support, justice, and peace. Signed by the Mayor of Elgin. So Joanne, I'm gonna present this to you. Thank you. And ask if you guys, do you wanna say something? You guys? Okay, we won't prolong any time. <laughs> Just wanna say thank you for allowing us to recognize Victim Awareness Week. Uh, this is the first time that we've done that and we will continue to do it in a bigger way going forward because I think it's important for us as a city to work hard as we can to make things right for the victims that we encounter here in our city. So thank you very much. Finally, we have National Peace Officers Memorial Day and I see the chief and some others are gonna come up, Detective Houghton. Welcome. Welcome. Assistant Chief, right? Deputy Chief. Deputy and Chief. Detective yes. Andrew Houghton. Houghton, <laughs> yes. Okay, welcome. Let me read the proclamation. Whereas May 15th has been designated as National Peace Officers Memorial Day, and whereas the members of the Elgin Police Department play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of Elgin, and whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties of their law enforcement agency and that members of our law enforcement agency recognize their duty to serve the people. And whereas the men and women of the Elgin Police Department unceasingly provide a vital public service, 
Now, therefore, I, David Captain, Mayor of the City of Elgin, Illinois, declare Wednesday, May 11th, 2022, as National Peace Officers Memorial Day, as a day to remember those officers who have gone before us, and I hereby order the lowering of the flags flying in front of this facility to half mass, signed by the Mayor of Elgin. Thank you, City Council, um, Mayor Pro Temp, and City Manager Kozel. So um, May 11th through the 17th is National Police Week, and during that week it's an opportunity to honor law enforcement officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty. Additionally, it's an opportunity to show support for current law enforcement officers as well. So I would like to invite the community and everyone um, on May 11th at 2.30 in front of the police department we will be hosting our annual memorial ceremony. I'm joined this evening by Deputy Chief Adam Schusler and also Detective Andrew Houghton, who is our Vice President of the Police Union. So I appreciate the community's support and everything that you do for the police officers, and I hope to see everyone there. Thank you. Okay, give me a second, I'll be right back up. At this point in the agenda, we have public comments or recognizing persons present, but we have none signed up. I think mostly because everybody signed up and spoke on an item on the early agenda. So we'll move on to bids, and we also have no bids, so we're moving right along. Mr. Mayor, person? Yes. There may have been one person. Uh, yeah, there was somebody signed up, but oh, did you want to speak? I was told that you want you didn't want to. You want to? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All right, I thought it was because uh, it was on same the same uh, agenda or both agendas. Okay, Jennifer, yes, come on up. Jennifer Cook has signed up to to speak. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jennifer Cook, and I'm the owner and operator of Cook's Sweet Boutique and Cook's Ice Cream in downtown Elgin. This actually brings me a lot of memories as it was in this room five years ago today that I attended this meeting when my first uh, provisional special use permit um, was approved by city council. So thank you for this time this evening and reconsidering your position on the nightmare on Chicago Street. Um, I, I, like I said before, I did move into my current uh, business on February of 2020, uh, six weeks before the mandatory shutdown for non-essential businesses. Um, the nightmare on Chicago Street vote a couple weeks ago really fired me up, and you're all going to be receiving an email um, that's going to basically articulate the narrative in a little bit more depth than what I'm going to speak about publicly um, in the record. But I do believe that it was important for you to know a little bit of the backstory. Um, so the nightmare on Chicago Street was forecasted in my business projections uh, when I decided to start a brick and mortar business. Um, and having lost it for a couple years, uh, created um, some, some holes, some gaps in my uh, revenue. Um, additionally, there's been a couple of other incidents um, in regards to the city that I um, do want to speak about today. Um, while I know that the COVID pandemic was not the fault of the, the city, it did have a, a disproportionately profound effect, and the federal government recognized this when it declared 60120 as being extraordinarily negatively affected um, in the idle grant uh, metrics. To date, I've received no funding um, from the federal, county, or state programs uh, due to the timing of my new business and the qualifying criteria. I'm not looking for sympathy in regards to my misfortune, but I'm looking for opportunity. I am speaking, you, uh, speaking to you in regards to the marketing uh, communications in the city, but especially in consideration to business and economic development. I am calling for articulation across all aspects of government and city departments to be more business friendly and pro-business. I'm a former teacher, as you know, my husband is principal. Just as in school, this cross-discipline uh, approach to teaching raises student a success on test scores. This principle can be used uh, to economic development in supporting and, and building into local businesses, helps make them more money, creates more jobs, more visitors, creates more revenue for the city and taxes, etc. Um, when I do better, I can be better for the community, and I can give those. Uh, I can. Uh, 
gift, uh, the, all of the gift cards that I've donated, candy baskets, uh, events that I have done, such as this weekend I'm doing um, a free ice cream event for the state representative. I have uh, made a big candy basket for one of the arts foundations. When I'm being successful, I can continue to do those uh, pro bono free events. And you've seen me doing this for five years. I'm celebrating the five years of Cook's Ice Cream on May 28th next month. Um, so again, I know I'm, uh, I'm over time. I do want you to read a little bit about um, a situation recently where I was asked to be um, compensated for my time um, to pay for my commercial vehicle in uh, permitting fees, whatever, and um, it was not in the budget. So I guess really simply with that 500000 if you could please pay my $250 truck fee for the movie night um, to kind of help me be able to um, be there for the community as I always have been. Other municipalities have paid it, Lake Zurich, uh, Villa Park, um, Bartlett Library District, um, and when I have asked, like, can you please, you know, per, you know, exchange goods, you know, ice cream for money, and I'm told no, it makes me feel very worthless. And um, having, you know, the city uh, actually, like, you know, pay me for my time um, would really uh, make me feel a lot more valued. So again, um, I do want to. I mean, you will be receiving that email to, uh, probably tomorrow. It, you know, I'm the candy and ice cream girl, and like I got a little upset a couple weeks ago, and it kind of, you know, <laughs> like somebody had said, I think it was Councilman Good. Like, you know, we could have been, you know, all like really angry, and and I was angry, and now like having you know experienced the first uh, session. Um, I do know that you guys are here for me and you are going to support me. And all I can do is ask for help. And so um, I, yeah, I love what Councilman uh, Powell said about uh, the council needing to change. And again, this articulation, pro-business, make sure that you know parks and rec, events, whatever, is all how can we help the businesses, please, because we're not gonna be there if you don't. I mean, I, we barely survived the pandemic. I am still standing, I am fighting. But I just remembered, you know, when we were doing, uh, I'm, I'm so grateful because I was at the t Trail of Terror and we were doing a bending with <laughs> Councilman Rauschenberger's ice cream bike. And I just cried in the middle of the street because these people were like, we were washing their windows on Lower Wacker Drive because, you know, the, the communication to the city in regards to the event wasn't saying, hey, help these businesses that are fighting to, st to stay alive in their businesses, they were ignoring us and we lost a ton of money and I threw all my beautiful treats away. And, um, you know, just again, just uh, I have a lot of ideas and I'm going to put that in my email of how um, you can help help me and specifically and, and us as a business community. So thank you so much for your time. I hate to spew negative, but uh, I, I really appreciate it. And, Come to Quick Sweet Boutique. We just got a big, huge order, and uh, we are going to be doing a grand reopening um, in May. So I encourage you to come. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we're, I believe, done with recognized persons present and the public comments. And as I said before, there are no bids, so we will go right to other business. And number one is an ordinance amending Chapter 6.06 .06 of the Elgin Municipal Code 1976 is amended entitled Alcoholic Liquor Dealers to amend the number of certain available liquor license classifications. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any comment on the item? Hearing none, Rose, I'm take it. Good. Okay. okay. Uh, with nobody wanting to make a comment, I'll ask for a vote. Councilmember Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Braschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Yes. I believe the motion passes 8 nothing. Consent agenda? Move for approval. Second. Second. Hearing nobody wanting to remove anything from the consent agenda, I'll ask for a vote on that item. Councilmember Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Roschmerger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Yes. I believe that those items pass with a vote of eight to nothing. Miscellaneous business. Move for approval? Second. <clears throat> We have a vote on that, Ms. Dewis. Council Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. 
Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Rushmer? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Yes. That of the miscellaneous business is approved eight to nothing. Announcements. The next committee of the whole meeting is Wednesday, May 11th, 2022 at 6 p.m. here in the City Council Chambers. And the next regular meeting of the Elgin City Council, same night, Wednesday, May 11th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the regular meeting and return to the Committee of the Whole. So, so moved. moved. Second. Can you call the roll? Yes. Council Members Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Rauschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Yes. The motion's approved eight to nothing, and so now we have just readjourn or we will readjourn i'll take a motion to readjourn the committee of the whole meeting so moved second no i'm sorry Re reconvene sorry i heard them i i heard the the comment from the audience and you're right yeah i'm sorry it's a motion to reconvene the the, the meeting uh, committee of the whole meeting so moved second okay can we have a tally the vote council members dixon yes good yes martinez Yes. Powell? Yes. Rauschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Yes. The motion reconvene is approved 8 to 0, and we were on item B, and I will turn it over to the city manager. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Item B is a presentation from the Elgin Public Museum in anticipation of consideration of item D, a purchase of service agreement with the museum. <laughs> this evening, the public museum leadership will be providing information on the organization's accomplishments and its continuing plans for improvement. Thank you for this opportunity to address you for 13 minutes and 42 seconds on the progress Elgin Public Museum made in 2021 to improve its stability and its visibility as a worthy local cultural asset. We have worked hard in spite of the obstacles the pandemic still threw in our path. My name is Sherry Blazier. I am a native Elginite who has lived here all my life. I was hired in May 2019 as education coordinator, later adding public relations to that title. And in November 2021, right about five and a half months ago, I became director, although I additionally continue in those previous roles. Going back, oops, that's a little too far. Going back just a bit, 2020 was EPM's centennial year. The building is, of course, the city, is a city of Elgin's a neoclassic architectural gem from mosaic tile floor to spiral staircase to scroll work to ceiling skylights. Opened by the local Audubon Society chapter in, on November 13, 1920, their bird exhibits were enhanced by the pieces originally intended for the museum from the collection of George and Mary Lord, uh, the benefactors of Lord's Park and everything in it. One of these is an extinct Ice Age giant Irish deer, still the centerpiece mascot today. In December 1982, Elgin Public Museum Incorporated, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, was established to see to the management and staffing of the museum, and since that time has operated under a purchase of service agreement with the City of Elgin. Early in 2020, the City of Elgin approved 9-0 by this very council and mayor, graciously renegotiated a PSA with the museum that included an increase in city funding, and we were extremely grateful. A few weeks later, COVID. For a big chunk of 2020, we were closed to the public. Schools were in remote learning. There could be no field trips, admission revenue, store sales, in-person fundraisers, or true celebration of our centennial. But that PSA funding, along with PPP, kept us afloat. We turned the corner into 2021, hoping that the pandemic would soon be behind us. And of course, that's not how it worked out. But we forged ahead, and nobody was more surprised than me in compiling this report to see how truly much we did do and accomplish in 2021. It is important to us that the city of Elgin and the taxpayers see that we utilize our $60,000 annual city funding to provide positive learning experiences and fun to this community. So who are we and what do we do? First and foremost, EPM is a longtime partner in education to area schools. That said, that's been tough to do through the pandemic. 
We did about 140 ed programs in 2019. That plunged down to a handful in 2020, but bounced up to 55 in 2021, largely by extending ourselves to small homeschool groups. Thus far in 2022, we are seeing an encouraging return of interest in field trips from the public schools, preschools, and various organizations. EPM provides badge earning programs for Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, and American Heritage Girls. Our unique location inside Lords Park allows for both indoor and outdoor programs with a walking trail alongside Willow Creek, the lagoons, the zoo, and examples of savanna, woodland, and wetland plant life. We can show kids a wide range of habitats and animals. EPM is educational fun inside Lords Park Zoo. Friends of Lords Park Zoo, or FLIPS as we call them, sponsor four series of programs that we develop, schedule, and present or host inside the zoo. Meet the Bison is a February through November monthly session in which participants get up close and personal with Becky, Drew, and Dakota. And then there are three mainstays of our summer zoo programs. Pause on the Porch, led by Marge Fox, is a story time for the younger set. Adventures in the Zoo features many hands-on educational items on nature and anthropology topics. But the crown jewel of the FLIPS EPM summer programs is uncaged in the zoo, in which live animals delight audiences who are allowed to touch many of them. Animals featured in 2021 included snakes, frogs, tortoises, a baby alligator, a tarantula, sugar gliders, chinchillas, a cockatoo, a turtle, a red-tailed hawk, owls, an anteater, and a very popular sloth. Our 2021 zoo programs drew numbers equaling and often exceeding pre-pandemic norms. EPM is a place of hands-on play and exploration for families and kids of all ages. As education coordinator, I have taken a solemn vow that there shall always be a scavenger hunt for kids throughout the museum and that it shall change frequently and that there shall be prizes for at least as long as there is a Dollar Tree where I can buy them cheap. <laughs> EPM is committed to quality work and proud to have been recognized for it. Our centennial project, consisting of an exhibit and commemorative book, received a 2021 Mayor's Preservation Award. We still have this fine exhibit up to allow more people to enjoy it. And that is Tilly the Bear at its center, who actually lived at Lord's Park Zoo back in the 1930s. EPM is a place of evolving and brand new exhibits. In 2021, we unveiled two new permanent exhibits, the Foxes of Illinois and a total renovation of our insects area. A few things are sacred, but as director, I consider continuous change a major priority. We not only want to get more people to come to EPM, we want them to come back again and again. EPM is a place for special events and presentations. To name a few in 2021, Earth Month, Beekeeping, Frogs of Chicagoland, Stargazing Twice with U46 Planetarium's Peggy Hernandez, a visit from canine officer Bauer and Chance the Comfort Dog. We also hosted numerous musical performances. Among others, Elgin High School's Madrigals, Mariachi Band, and Percussion Team, and twice we welcomed ensembles from the Elgin Youth Symphony Orchestra. On a very, very chilly December evening, we celebrated the winter solstice with a stroll among the old oaks, the telling of ancient lore, and a sing-along around a campfire. And in mid-November through the end of the year, we featured a temporary exhibit, Lord's Park Through the Lens, showcasing the work of nine of the Elgin area's most talented photographers. And Elgin Public Museum is a vivid celebration of global cultures and local diversity. Illinois Humanities grant presenters in 2021 were Ojibwa folklorist Kim Sugafis and Henry Cervantes' Aztec dance troupe with dramatic pounding drums. We are aware that we, even as a museum, should only guide the narrative when it comes to people. We can speak for the fossils, speak for the trees, speak for the insects, but going forward, I want us to develop displays and programs in which Elginites of many backgrounds can relate their cultural experiences in their own voices. Our annual touching on traditions with customary holiday decorations explaining Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Diwali, Ramadan, Loi Katong, and more is wonderful, but after 35-ish years, it's getting a little shabby and same old and in need of a reboot from those diverse voices. Latino Elginites helped us colorfully decorate the entire museum for Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. 
Dia de los Muertos, not at all the same as Halloween, became an immensely popular and respectably profitable single day event for the museum, pre-pandemic, drawing hundreds. In 2021, decoration was all we could reasonably do with the Delta variant running rampant, but we intend to make a full-blown community event of that again this October. And speaking of community, a highlight of 2021 was working with so many community organizations and local businesses. Either as the museum or as individuals on the staff and board, we engaged with all of these and intend to continue working with them and to network even more. Now, you should have received a general 2021 financial overview this evening provided by our co-treasurer, Diana ortega Arith. And the full financials will be coming in mid-May mid when our uh, taxes are completed. I am just here to show you pretty pictures and tug at your heartstrings, let's face it. But I want to share with you three numbers that I think are key indicators of our upward trajectory. First, in spite of pandemic closure and then the rest of the year and beyond being under mask mandate, and many people's skittishness to be around others even with masks, we nonetheless welcomed at least 4,003 people when all our public hours admissions, education programs, special events, and zoo presentations attendances were totaled. I expected to might be half of that. Second, 2021 was EPM's best year ever for total membership revenue, which without raising dues topped the $4,000 mark. We had a high rate of renewals and also a lot of new members. Memberships, to my way of thinking, are votes of confidence. And third and most encouraging, donations in first quarter 2022 have already exceeded total donations in 2021. Also, the board has formed a financial resources and development committee charged with conceiving new fundraising ideas and developing new revenue streams. And we currently have four or five people expressing interest in joining the board and or such committees. So what has happened so far and what is in the works for 2022? Late last year, we received an Illinois Humanities Activate History microgrant for a January 22 virtual program that reunited members of the locally legendary LaSalle expedition of the 1970s, which recreated the explorer's 1690 travels. Much more than just reminiscences of an epic canoe trip, they discussed ecological conditions of the 1970s versus today, the women of the liaison team who led the way town to town, and a radically new view of LaSalle himself, his mission, and his relationship with indigenous peoples he met along the way. And this program has led to leader Reed Lewis and Rich Gross, a crew member who has intensely studied the history of LaSalle's time, making an extraordinary offer to update and renovate our LaSalle room exhibit. I would like to see it expanded into currently dead museum space so it can touch on all of those previously underexamined related topics. We will be utilizing part of a very generous anonymous donation to upgrade our discovery room with its primary purposes of interactive fun for kids and a classroom for ed programs. We will be purchasing adjustable height tables and kid chairs, kid sized chairs with modular and stackable being operative words so we can quickly and easily convert the room into event and special program space. There will be new books, incluyendo Mas en Español, and educational toys and games. And we also hope to mount a large TV screen on the wall to allow for easier video presentations. We have two smaller scale new exhibits planned. Big Cats will feature large wild cats of North America and Southwestern Corrugated Pottery, which is a particular interest of our museum assistant, Andrew Taylor. Andrew is currently abroad on a slightly secret government mission to recover missing World War II craft and potentially uh, remains of missing American GIs. And we hope that he will be able to present a program to us about that when he returns. And we've been applied for a grant to renovate our outdated endangered species area seen on the right. The project would enlist Elgin Elementary School students to adopt a species and research it for the exhibit with our guidance. It's important to me to let young people play a true role in shaping exhibits that will make them feel connected to the museum and in turn feel the museum's connected connection to this community. Because the public being directly involved in Elgin Public Museum is how this institution will survive long term. But wait, there's more, but having taken enough time already, I won't go into these. As you can see, 
We have a lot going on and in the planning. Continued expansion of volunteers, social media, board members, interns, grant programs, a lecture series. Our new website, finally, uh, new merchandise for the store and the uh, fundraiser brick garden. So in conclusion, just a metaphor of sorts that happened in August of 2021 when Rich Hoke kindly arranged for a new sign for the west side of our building. This, this change of our so-called creeping crud sign to a brand new one was part of a very invigorating week. After, a few days before its installation, board president Georgie Camacho and I were visited by Hugh Epping the widower of legendary EPM director Nancy Epping. He told us Nancy would be happy and proud to see the energy coming back at EPM. We were over the moon. So this is not just a literal sign of improvement, but we feel certain a sign of more good things to come. I thank you very much for listening, and we all thank you for supporting us. Sherry, thank you. Thank you for that fantastic presentation. Uh, I will jump in and kind of be Mayor Pro Tem and, and talk about three things over the last year that I can certainly remember and they're all positive. One is I came to your annual meeting. I think Rose was there too, uh, who's on the line with us, um, and got to watch you guys. Democracy in action, certainly something we're doing right now here, but you guys did a fantastic, it seems like you're doing a fantastic job of kind of bringing things up to date and revising and renovating and updating bylaws and all that. Yes. And it was just, and, and your board, <clears throat> and that was great to see. Second, I zoomed into that LaSalle expedition uh, reenactment um, remote presentation, and it was fascinating. I really enjoy that. I honestly think that Reed Lewis and that expedition is kind of under appreciated and certainly any chance we can great. kind of promote them I'm always for so that was great to watch and I also ha had the chance to bring my dad to the Ojibwe folklorist and storyteller so that was great too so just wanted to shout out to those three things because they were great and emblematic of kind of the efforts you guys are making your board is making you're making to kind of redo that and reinvigorate that museum so thank you any other comments? Yes, Carol, sorry. Thank you so much for that great presentation. Your enthusiasm tonight was also super contagious. It's been a great audience tonight. And um, it feels wonderful up here to see how our community, all our community supports each other. And um, congratulations on uh, such uh, expansive programming. Um, partnering with so many organizations. I think we've talked about that in the past that, it, you know, there's endless <coughs> possibilities, right? Um, you're uh, obviously from your um, financial sheet, yeah. your uh, fiscal, <laughs> fiscal responsibility mm -hmm. and um, moving forward, looking for revenue through grants. That's, you know, great for all our community. And um, I, I guess more materials in Espanol, right, to See? serve all of our community. I know you're, I know Georgie well, and I know she's very thoughtful about, um, you know, the, our diversity. So thank you. I'm all, I'm, I'm all in. Sorry, Steve, and then Tish. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry, so much. I, I just want to extend a compliment to you, not just on the presentation, but the fact that because you're so well known in Elgin and throughout the city and the community and you've done so much here, you have now spread the wings of this museum and brought it back to life. And you've got a great team that you work with, but they all, the city knows you uh, so well that now because of that, uh, this museum is living again. And I know that the, uh, the book that you were behind duly noted a mayor's award. I own a copy of it, and I've looked through it uh, <laughs> numerous times, and I became a member this year. Yes, you did. And I just think it's a wonderful, <laughs> Thank you. wonderful place. And uh, I'll date myself. I first went to that museum 60 years ago on a field trip bus from Washington School. Wow. So it's a great place. Thank you. Thank you. Tish, yes. 
thank you for the presentation. I um, just want to echo some of what's already been said, but I, I want to say I really, really appreciate everything the board and you have done to really breathe new life into the museum. It is a gem in our community, and it shouldn't be a hidden gem. And the work that you've done over the past few years, and particularly even during the pandemic, is is really phenomenal and much appreciated. It really speaks to the vision of, of the staff and the board and their commitment to uh, the community, all the collaborations. Um, you're everywhere. And, you know, I, 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 I see so many postings and just really promoting the museum and everything that it has to offer. I really appreciate it. And I, I, I was looking through some pictures uh, when, my, when my son was, was younger, um, coming to the museum on, on Family Science Night, on Friday nights. Um, he was in a giant bubble. <clears throat> so, um, and I remember telling parents, you know, hey, you, you know, looking for something fun and cheap to do with your kids, take them to the museum, you know, on Friday nights. Um, it, it, it's really, it was, it was really a good thing. And, and I, like I said, I just really applaud the work that you're doing to, um, you know, just reinvigorate the museum. So thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm, Corey, I saw first and then Dustin. Uh, yeah, thanks. I um, thank you again, Sherry, for the presentation. Uh, thank you to the Elgin Public Museum for uh, for showing up and just for um, I think just really breathing, give it a, a new breath of fresh air. Um, in 2017, when I first came on to council, uh, visited a, a number of different places, and the and the public Elgin Public Museum was one of those places. Um, I hadn't been there probably since I was a kid, uh, and um, the changes that were from you know when I was younger until you know now, now an adult and being able to see them there, it was a lot of the same uh, setup, not exhibits, but you know, same, a lot of the same setup, um, and and I also participated in the annual report, the virtual one that was had uh, last year in 2020. May I think, you know, probably the same one that John and and uh, and Rose was at, and I'm just amazed at how well financially things have turned around from just from 2017 when it felt like we didn't know what was going to happen um, to then making it through the pandemic. And, and I see that you took advantage um, of the PPP loans. Um, I know that we've supported along the way too as well. And I'm gonna continue to support because not only did were you good stewards of that money, you went out and found other sources of revenue to help stabilize the organization. So thank you, thank you. for doing that because that sets an example um, of how we want other uh, organizations that benefit this city to also operate. Um, so, uh, you know, with that being said, I mean, just great job. Happy to have you. Thank you, Thank you. all of you, for the work that you do. Uh, keep it up. Thanks. Thank you. Dustin? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking the wrong way. Did somebody want to make a comment? Yeah, I, I would like to make a comment. Excuse me, Sherry. I'm, I'm very shy, um, and I'm not a public speaker, which is why Sherry's up here rather than me, um, besides the fact that she's running the show now. And I'm so proud that she is doing so and she has exceeded expectations. Um, I also wanted to thank uh, City Manager Kozel and the Council and the City of Elgin, Barb uh, Kaselica and Amy Spooner. You guys have been partners and friends to the museum. And I started at the museum as a desk attendant and I kind of had a meteoric, meteoric rise to the position of president through no true um, desire but it happened because somebody had to take the home um, but I didn't know what I was doing and it does take village and you guys have been fabulous and Judy Hayner all the board members 
we don't know what we're, we we didn't know what we were doing, and we had to uh, depend on and lead on leadership from other organizations to help turn things around and help guide us. I'm a school librarian for Pete's sake. You know, it's it's been a huge learning experience and. I'm just thrilled to death that Sherry has taken it where she has. And it's it was my dream to see it take off like this, and she's making it happen. So I just want to thank you guys very much, City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just real quick, I just want to say, you know, there's a lot of talk about volunteers tonight. Um, so hats off to you for generating the number of hours that you did. Um, that's over 10, you're averaging over 10 per week, so that's huge. Um, that's one of those numbers that you can just tell that uh, being run by somebody that's enjoyable to be around and generating a good vibe on, on your, your turf. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to give you a heads up for that. Thank you. Anybody else, Rose? Uh, thank you. Um, I just want to add on to what everybody has, has said, but Sherry and Georgie, I almost see you guys um, sometimes a couple of times a week at different organizations. And I just want to tell you how much I appreciate that in the little time that you have been in there, you've dusted that building and you've woken it up to the city. And I mean, everybody's always talking about the Elgin Public Museum, where, as like Corey said, have, I hadn't been there since I was in fourth grade. And it's good to see that when you have events there and I go in, there's always something different that you have done or are doing to it. And I think it took um, both of you guys to understand that, you know, it's to understand that you know what you know and you don't know what you don't know. And to go ahead and, and listen to people and and understand and you guys have blossomed so so much so thank you thank you for all you do you and and uh, your group that works with you truly appreciate it thank you anybody else well I'll make a final comment or, or a question that I was wondering if anybody would ask but I guess it's the last and I will since Steve brought us back 60 years ago to field trips and Longtime board member Clara Leis is here, so I guess I have to ask: What about the two-headed calf? <laughs> you were there, so you should come up. And <laughs> the two-headed calf is actually a; it is no longer in existence. Um, it was born on a farm west of Elgin and taxidermied by. A farmer out there who was the the uh, uncle of somebody that I ran into in Dundee, and I wish I would have written down her name like 20 something years ago. We got into this talk, and somehow we we got on the the subject of the two-headed calf. Um, the two-headed calf, um, as you recall, there was a period of time where the museum was closed, and it was actually used as at the time it was I think storage for. Um, parks and Rec or some of the, the maintenance vehicles and it wasn't very well climate controlled at the time and so when Nancy and the, the people, uh, Jane Roll, were, were um, opening the museum trying to get it going again, there were several taxidermied specimens including the Cyclops cat which was not a real one-eyed cat, that was somebody's fanciful thing but the the two-headed calf and some of the other specimens got moth infested so that when they went to lift it up to move it, it literally broke and shredded apart. So it mm. had to be discarded. Now, Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum does have 48 two-headed calves somewhere in its collection, which I found reading a flight magazine going to South Carolina a few years ago. So if we ever want to get one back, which I think would be fa fantastic, but at the time I was on the board, there was controversy about whether we should do this or not. Um, we have a source. So <laughs> that's my story, and I'm sticking to it, but that's, that's the story. 
If anyone can get it back, it's Sherry. <laughs> It would make for a great program on genetic mutations. You know, I can legitimize it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> so any further comments, questions? There's no motion pending. We have an item later on the agenda to consider with the Public Museum. Sherry, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Planning the, yeah, planning the agenda, trying to figure out the best order. Uh, the next item is Mad Bomber's fireworks production for the 2022 Fourth of July fireworks. Thought that Kate O'Leary may still be here, but we allowed her to go home to see her son tonight, and she told me the fireworks will be big, loud, and spectacular as they always are. So this is the approval with our regular vendor, Mad Bomber's Fireworks for the 4th of July Fireworks in conjunction with a concert in Festival Park. Move for approval. Second. Second. Having a motion and a second, is there any comments? Hearing none, clerk can call the roll. Councilmember Stixon? Yes. Good. Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Rauschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Temp Stefan? Yes. Motion passes eight to nothing. Item D. This purchase a services agreement with the Elgin Public Museum uh, in the amount of $60,000. Note for the council's benefit that this does not contemplate the purchase of a two headed <laughs> calf at this time. Move for approval. <laughs> second. second. All right. Having a motion to second. Any comment or questions? Anybody? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Yes. Rauschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stephan? Yes. The item passes eight to nothing. Item E? Item E is consideration of the proposed project list for the parks and recreation um, bond funded improvements in the amount of uh, five million dollars. Um, this morning the bond issue closed, no thanks to an emergency um, trip to the recorder's office that Ms. Naraki made yesterday afternoon. Maria Campata and staff are here if, if uh, council has any question on the list of park projects that are being considered. Is the council's probably aware one of those items is the next item on the agenda, completion of the work at the Jackie Cook Park and Forest Preserve. Move for approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Corey. Uh, yes, for city manager. Mm -hmm. um, last city council meeting, we said that we were going to be having a public discussion on the parks. Um, does that ring a bell? It doesn't. I'm sorry. sorry. Or I mean, is this is this is it? Is, is this it? I thought we were going to, for the planning process for the future. Oh, so yeah. we approved, this is different than the amendment to the parks master plan. That was approved and that will involve a process with the community. This is for work that will take place, proposed work during this construction <clears throat> season using the $5 million bond that the city just completed, or the award of this year. Got it. I just wanted, my question was actually mm -hmm. going to be, um, what's the timeline of when we're going to have that, that public discussion for the plan for the future? Well, I think that will involve, Maria is here, but she'll be able to talk, it'll be working with the consultant and then they'll begin doing the work that's necessary to begin the engagement with the community for the updates to that master plan. Got it. Okay. That's all. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Oh, Tish. Yes. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, looking at the list, I, I guess this is a priority list. Um, I know when we were talking about the bond, uh, issuing the bond to pay for a lot of the work that needed to be done. There was a lot of focus on replacement of uh, out-of-date playground structures. Um, but I don't see a list of, is there a more complete list of playground structures that will be replaced besides what is listed here? Uh, not at this time. So. We will continue every year to replace a lot of those playground structures. The problem with it is if we do a whole bunch of them right now, they'll all in be go bad at years, this. We're going to be in the same position. Right. So on, on our uh, on our kind of secondary list, we do have some additional playground structures. But um, like I said, uh, if, if we do too many at one time, we're going to be in the same situation 
in 15 or 20 years. Okay. Um, I see the dog park development, and we've gotten some emails already about dog parks and what people think and like and don't like. I guess a question I have is what process are we using to get to gauge input and feedback from the community where we're talking about putting in dog parks or new playground equipment, the pickleball courts, things of that sort? Because I know in, in some cases we've had to kind of retract and, and, and do something different like with the um, uh, park in, in, in your neighborhood, up in the Northeast neighborhood, not too long ago. St. Francis Park. St. Francis Park, thank you. Which is very nice, by the way, but even with, you know, with the basketball court that folks were so concerned about. Um, that's my, my question, you know, how are we gauging, engaging the community in what we're doing there? So for the dog parks, uh, for our ideas on locations for that, we currently have a survey out. Okay. Um, and, and Specifically, we put that survey out so we can gauge the response from the neighborhoods. Um, when we do a park renovation, uh, if it's a neighborhood park, if there's uh, any renovation that we're going to do in a neighborhood park, once we have uh, some input from our, architecture, our, our architects and our consultants, then we will have uh, neighborhood meetings uh, to engage um, feedback from those neighborhoods. And so is it just, is it in-person meetings? Are we doing things online? Are we doing things at some of the schools that are in the neighborhoods? Because obviously I'm just thinking in terms of who are the users and are we making sure we're actually getting input from, from those folks? So pre-COVID, we did in-person meetings. We would find a location within that neighborhood, be it a, a, a church or a school or uh, some facility within that neighborhood and we would do in-person meetings. Once COVID hit, some of the playground renovations we did, we would send out surveys uh, with park designs to the residents in that surrounding neighborhood. Via mail. Via mail, yeah. And, and our, response, our response rate for those surveys was probably 10 times what we had when we did in-person meetings. So when we do an in-person meeting for a neighborhood, um, you know, we could have anywhere from five to 15 people there. Uh, some of the responses that we got in the mailings that we did out for the surveys, um, several hundred responses. Good. So it, our, our, our return rate was, was much better with those, with those uh, mailed out surveys. So a, a, as we go forward here, we'll, we'll have to figure out, we'll work with our consultants and figure out um, what we want to do, how we want to do it. Maybe we do a combination of both. But, but once again, our response with the mail-out surveys was much higher than in-person meetings. Were the, the mail-out surveys um, in English and Spanish? Yes. Good. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? So real oh, quick on, yes. the, uh, on the master plan. So we actually have a kickoff meeting set later in May here with the master plan and the consultant for that. And, and part of that process will be community input meetings. So once we, uh, once we have that kickoff plan, we'll have a schedule for when those meetings will take place and, and we'll be sure to get that information out. Thank you for that information, I appreciate that. And the reason why I was bringing it up is because I spoke with a couple of residents um, a few residents down near the Illinois court area who have been wanting a park for a while now and um, they were asking when could they provide that feedback so <coughs> this would be the appropriate time yep. right so in the future okay absolutely so, yeah okay. thank you any other comments questions anybody else do we have we don't have a motion do we we do have a motion okay can yes, you call do. the roll sorry Council members Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Rushberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stephan? Yes. The motion passes eight to nothing. Item F. This is the proposed professional services agreement with Smith Group Incorporated for the final phase of the development of the Jack E. Cook Park and Forest Preserve. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. Is there are, are there any comments or questions? Finally. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, hearing none, I'll have the clerk please call the roll. Councilmember Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Braunschmerger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Yes, the motion passes eight to nothing. Uh, announcements from council. Anybody have any announcements? Tish, I see you first. Um, two announcements. Um, the African American Coalition of Kane County, in conjunction with the Elgin Cultural Arts Commission, will be hosting the Juneteenth celebration um, sure. again this year. Um, some folks remember that from from prior years. Obviously, during the pandemic, it was it was not held. Um, and actually even some of the prior years um, be, just leading up to the pandemic, but it will be at Festival Park this year on Saturday, June 18th, uh, all looking for volunteers and vendors and uh, food trucks. If folks are interested in participating, uh, please uh, reach out to uh, me, uh, my email address, uh, city email address, powell underscore t at cityofelgin.org. Um, and I can uh, work to put you in contact with uh, the African American Coalition of Kane County. Uh, there's also um, a Facebook page for the Elgin Juneteenth Festival uh, where more information is available, but definitely encourage folks to um, come out and participate. Should be a fun event this year and uh, with lots of entertainment and, and food and uh, cultural celebration. And last but not least, want to um, wish my son Kyle a si happy 16th <laughs> birthday. My nice. son turned 16 today. Remember uh, exactly 11 years ago today when I was sworn in for my first term on the city council, it was also on his birthday. He, he was here in his cute little, cute little dress up suit and he was five years old. <laughs> my how time flies. So um, happy birthday, Kyle. We yes. love you. Yes. Steve. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I just want to remind everybody, uh, being that I'm into the uh, historical preservation, the uh, annual Mayor's Awards, hopefully Dave can attend. If not, John, you might have to. But that is uh, next Tuesday. And it's going, every year it's held at a unique uh, historical type of place. Mm -hmm. And this year it's at the Fox River Day School gymnasium out there just on the other side of 90 off Route 25 at 6 o'clock next Tuesday. Certain people will be getting their plaques for their homes as well as other individuals and businesses will be awarded a Mayor's Award for renovation and preservation of their structures throughout the town and some other things. So. Hope some of you can attend it. It's always a great event. Yes, thanks. Anybody else? Rose, can't see you, but do you have anything? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay, announcements from staff. Um, nothing other than um, the mayor, I'm told, is four weeks ahead of schedule in his recovery with the knee replacement. That was last week, so when I bring over the documents that Tim has for me to sign, we'll see if he's making, making even speedier progress. So obviously we all wish him well in his recovery. Yes. Okay, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Please call the roll, Kim. Council Members Dixon? Yes. Good? Yes. Martinez? Yes. Powell? Yes. Braschenberger? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Thorne? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stefan? Yes. The motion passes 8 to nothing. We are adjourned until next meeting. Thank nice you. Nice job. Good job, John. Yeah.